Hello everyone, this is a video on how to uh, take apart and replace or upgrade the hard disk in this HP Pavilion Notebook Model 15 AB271SA, otherwise known as Product ID, if I can just about read this, K for Kilo, 7, Q for Quebec, 65, E A and then in the UK or possibly Europe then a hash sign A B U. First thing we need to do take out the battery which I've done then undo every single visible screw that you can find on the underside of this laptop and these may all be the same screw but I find it best to um, put them in a little map of where they came from so if there are any which are slightly different sizes, when you put the machine back together, you can tell from where on the machine they came from. So this is going to take me a little while to undo all of these. This one here, that I'm just pointing at with my finger, is the one which holds the DVD drive in. Uh, we will do that one next and take out the DVD drive. That's the DVD drive undone. We should now be able to just slide that DVD drive out. Underneath the DVD drive over here, there are two small silver screws. They also need to be renewed, renewed removed. And awkwardly, they use an absolutely tiny jewelers type screw So I've had to get my special jeweler's screwdriver. And undo that. So that's those two absolutely thin screws undone. Continuing along. That screw in this corner is definitely longer than all of the others and I'm going to assume the same for this one over here as well. Indeed. What HP are very good at doing is hiding screws under, for example, things like this rubber band here, although on this particular laptop I don't believe they have done, and almost certainly on this laptop, under these two little bits of stickers or plastic is either just something they used in moulding of the case or a screw. And in this instance, indeed, it's a screw. I'd generally prefer that they hid screws under these little plastic things than um, under the rubber that they quite often are good at doing. That is, those stickers are very good at bouncing away. Okay, so these two hidden screws, undo them. Whoops. Underneath these bits of plastic here, which you need to be careful when hinging up because they're stuck down on the, um, the inside side, like clipped in somehow. There we go. 
a hidden screw and over this side I'm going to guess there is also another hidden screw. Aha, that's just ruined my little map of where screws came from. Open up the machine and around the edge use a spudger or other small implement. Don't use a uh, screwdriver because you're very likely just to, it may work but you will damage the plastic case while you do it so just be aware that a spudger like this works a whole lot better than a screwdriver. Uh, if you're really stuck for what to use, then a credit card or a store loyalty card um, will probably also work. If you can't get it down the gap between the palm rest and the rest of the case, uh, taking that card and then finding some concrete or a brick wall and rubbing it against the brick wall to give you a tapered edge on that card is also quite a good way uh, to get around that problem. When you get to this part, it gets difficult to undo. You have these plastic clips down here, which really will not want to let go or give up. And quite often it's just finding the correct way to flex the case. There we go. So for this, I put my hand across the that bit here and bent this bit towards me, which unhooked some of the plastic tabs. And I'm just going to uh, try and do similar on this side. Yeah, there we go. So all these clips are now undone at the back. We need to gently hinge it up a bit and then push it, in my case, towards the camera or slide it. Don't lift it straight up because you've got this wire here and this wire here, which would have got fouled by those bits of the case. And there we go. We are finally, no help to uh, thanks to HP, into the machine. What do we have here? We've got CPU fan, wireless card, Two sticks of RAM here. This has eight gigs of RAM, so a four gig and a four gig stick. You've got the CPU. The CPU is BGA array soldered onto the board. So if you did want to replace that CPU, you cannot unless you've got a BGA solder rework station. Uh, BIOS battery, SD card slot, Ethernet, power. The power is on its own little um, fly lead. So if you smash the power, uh, you can just swap that connector out and then plug it in over onto the motherboard, keyboard connector, touchpad connector, um, and then the hard disk. Okay, that's now removed upwards. Be careful when moving this around, you've got this really thin uh, hard disk lead here. and. I need to undo, again, being careful not to graunch that cable, undo the serial ATA connector out of the back of this hard disk. There we go, that's the uh, hard disk undone. Going to get the SSD that I'm going to put into it. And then uh, we just do the reverse. I'm going to clone this drive 
onto this drive first so that we're, we don't have to reinstall this. Uh, so this video will carry on once I've done that. Hi again everyone, we're many hours later and we've finished the clone from OneDrive to the SSD. So this now needs to go back into the machine. I'm using the connector as a guide which way up because I've forgotten which way up it went. And I've also forgotten which way around these uh, guides went, but I suspect there's not much uh, difference in that. And probably where I've left them is which way they came out. So those guides go back on. I plug the serial ATA connector back in. It goes in at an angle, so there's two little tongues here that need to go in down this uh, left side of the machine uh, first, or possibly the right side on the video, I'm not entirely sure. Then you can push the rest of it down. So that's now flush with the case, and we can start putting stuff back together again. That's so definitely plugged in there, it's still plugged in there. We didn't undo anything else. So do the reverse, that goes beyond the edge. Remember if you do it like that, straight down, it can't because of the uh, cables that are there, so it goes beyond. Angled, get, uh, gets angled slightly, and then pull it towards. Then it will line up with all these screw holes and the front of the machine. And you push it down and clip it together. When you do this, it's a good idea to open the machine up and go round all of the bits that you can get to, clipping it together before you screw stuff in, because if you screw stuff in before doing this, and then you do this, the screws that you've just done up won't be tight. All right, there we go. I'm going to start with the two screws which get hidden by the little plastic feet. There's that one, and top right, or again on your video maybe bottom left, depending on uh, which way around the video is flipped. Now we can put these back on. And these are the only really long screws. So the longest of the screws that you've got, that you took out, go in there. And the same for the other one. That one's not sitting particularly well. go. Then I'm going to do the two which were hidden under those stickers. Those are potentially shorter than the others and they're the same size screws so it doesn't really matter. got to put the stickers back on, which are always going to be a bit of a pain. Not too bad. There we go. Don't really understand why they've put stickers over these screw holes when you've got recessed screws all over the place that are very similar, it's very unusual. All right, we're on to the flat silver screws which go near where the DVD drive goes in now. And that needs a different screwdriver, a much smaller jewelers type screwdriver. Uh, 
CD or DVD drive goes back in. And the screw for the DVD drive goes back in. That will hold that in place. And then it's just a case of going around all the other ones, which we can see, and put the screws back in from where they came. One more screw to go. Battery goes back in. Locked in and hopefully when I switch this machine on will boot up. There we go. Windows little uh, rotatey and it mm, yes is going to boot. Occasionally if you clone a drive like this the um, machine will get so far and then it will blue screen with an inaccessible boot device. If that happens if you have the free for home use or the paid version of Macrium Reflect you create a USB rescue disk and within the USB rescue disk, you do the fix boot options, um, and that will then uh, fix that kind of issue normally. So there we go. Hopefully this video has been really helpful to you. If it has, it'd be really helpful to me. If you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel, you don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thank you very much.